Track 27 Conversation A Hey Mick, have you ever been to Thailand? Yeah, I was there last year. Why'd you ask? Well, I'm thinking of doing a project on Asian food and was wondering whether Thai food was the same as Chinese. Oh, right. Um, Thai food's not exactly the same as Chinese, but they both have a really healthy diet with lots of vegetables. Some of the dishes are pretty hot and spicy, though. Conversation B Hi, Tony. Do you have a moment? Sure. What's it about? Well, I'm researching types of homes across the world, and I thought I'd ask you where people live in Australia. Sure. Which part of Australia are you thinking about? I mean, there are blocks of flats in most cities, the same as anywhere else in the world. Conversation C. Hi, Barbara. How's your Japanese language project going? It's great. I'm learning about the Japanese alphabet at the moment. And what about your project about China? How many languages do they speak? Ah, well, there's Mandarin Chinese and at least another ten varieties of Chinese from different regions. Wow, that's amazing. Conversation D. Amira, I'm doing a project on traditional clothing. Do you have any in the Emirates? Oh, yes, we do. The typical dress for women is called anabaya. It's basically a long black dress, but we decorate it with gold patterns around the sleeves and neck. It's usually made of a kind of silk. Look at this one here. What do you think? Oh, I think it's lovely. Track 28 I'm trying to find out if people from northern countries have the same attitudes to talking to strangers in public as people from southern countries. OK, so what have you found out? Uh, well, I found out that in some countries it's more common to talk in public than in others. For example, people in the UK and Holland don't usually talk to people they don't know, but the Italians and the Spanish seem to be much more open. They chat to people on buses, in shops, in restaurants. So, do you think that people from the south of Europe are friendlier than northern Europeans? Well, it does look that way. Even in the same country. I mean, uh, for example, in comparison with Italians from the north of Italy, the Italians in the south chat much more to each other in public. Hmm, it does sound interesting. Well, that's fine. I think you've found a good topic. Track 29 Hi, Barbara. Why don't you join our group? We're going to give a presentation about what we eat at each meal in our home countries. Oh, great. I love finding out about other cultures. So, where do we start? Breakfast? In the UK, we have cereal, toast, eggs and tea or coffee for breakfast. Have you got that, Mina? Yes, but breakfast in India is completely different. We have a lot of different kinds of breakfast across India, but mostly we eat some type of bread with lentils. Oh, is that right? In China, we have tea with noodles or rice and vegetables for breakfast. So, what do you have for lunch, Barbara? Uh, well, you know, in the UK, we don't usually have a big lunch. We usually just have a sandwich. But it's different in India, isn't it? Oh, definitely. I don't like sandwiches at all. We have rice and vegetables for lunch in India. Yeah, we have a cooked meal at lunchtime too. We usually have noodle soup and a main course. We have our main meal in the evening in the UK as well. Quite often we have chicken, meat or fish with potatoes and vegetables. Track 30 Hi, Mina. Shall we have a look at the material for our presentation on marriage customs? Yeah, sure. I've got a lot of information about India. 
How about you? Yes, yes. I've got material about marriage in the Emirates. Shall we get going? What about meeting? How do people in India meet in the first place? Mm, in traditional Indian families, the parents used to arrange the marriage, and the couple used to meet for the first time when the boy visited the girl's house. But that's changed now. Yeah, we used to have arranged marriages in the Emirates too. Did the groom have to give anything to the bride's family? I mean, did they give them a gift or money? Well, in India, in the old days, the girl's family used to give the boy's family a gift, like money or jewelry. But it's not allowed any more. Wow! In my country, the groom still has to pay all the expenses. <laughs> um, have there been any changes in marriage customs in India in recent years? Well, yes. I found an article about special websites for finding partners. It says that because so many young people from India study abroad these days, their families are using websites to find marriage partners for them. Oh, okay. And where does the couple live when they get married? That's another thing that's changing. In the past, the bride used to go to live with the family of the groom, but these days. More and more young couples are setting up their own homes independently. What about the Emirates? Track thirty-one, section three. You will hear two students discussing a project on international festivals with their tutor. First, in the exam, you will have twenty seconds to look at questions one and two. Listen carefully, and answer questions one and two. Good morning. Shall we start by looking at the topic of your project? So, what have you decided to research? Well, we thought we'd compare festivals in different countries and see if any of them are similar. Yeah, you know, like the carnival celebrations in South America and the water festival in Thailand. Okay. What exactly are you planning to study? The origins of the festivals, the types of celebration, people's attitudes towards the festivals. We were planning to look at the origins of the festivals and the time of year they're celebrated. We're thinking of looking at the connection between the seasons in different countries and the actual festivals, and then looking for similarities between countries that are quite far apart. Well, that sounds interesting. Did you say you've already started researching into the carnival? Yes, we've already found a connection between the carnival and the seasons. For instance, some researchers say that a very long time ago in Europe, people used to put on colourful masks and costumes at the beginning of the year to celebrate the end of winter, and then they could get ready for spring. Before you hear the next part of the conversation. In the exam, you will have twenty seconds to look at questions three to five. Track thirty-two. Listen carefully and answer questions three to five. Right, and then what happened? Well, as the years went by, the purpose of the carnival changed, and it became a religious festival. These days, there are big carnival celebrations in countries all across the world, like Brazil and India and Indonesia. But an interesting thing we discovered is that in some countries, people celebrate the carnival by throwing water at each other in the street. Well, we thought that obviously this is because carnivals celebrated at the hottest time of the year, just before the rainy season. So splashing people with water is a very good way of cooling them down. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, in the exam you will have twenty seconds to look at questions six to ten. Track thirty-three. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. Hmm. Yes, that makes sense. Um. Did you look into any other festivals? Yes, we did. What we're planning to do is more research into water festivals. We found that in Asian countries, where there aren't any carnival celebrations, 
There are still festivals that involve people splashing each other with water. Actually, we found references to them in Burma, Thailand, Vietnam, China, and Japan. But we also found a reference to a water festival in Mexico. So we thought we'd look into that a bit more and see if we can find any similarities between these countries. Ah,、uh, I mean, we realize that water is more than just a way of cooling people down in hot weather. It also has a lot of different religious meanings and purposes. For instance, we found that in some societies, water can mean life or wealth or just luck. Yes, and another thing we found out is that these water festivals often celebrate the beginning of the new year, just like the original celebrations hundreds of years ago before the carnival. So,、um, up to now, we found that the carnival and the seasons are linked by ancient traditions, and that water plays an important part in the celebrations. That is the end of section three. In the exam, you will have half a minute to check your answers.